For years, Netflix dominated the streaming world because of its in-depth knowledge of delivering high-resolution video across the globe. The company maintains its own standards and practices for capture, editing, and delivery for the best streaming resolution. For all of the company's original programming, the company has had a long list of approved cameras. What minimum specs are needed for Netflix approval? Why does it even matter? And should you buy only Netflix approved cameras? Let's find out. Fortunately, Chris, a camera system specialist at Netflix, recently shed some light on what Netflix actually looks for in a camera to be approved. What are those, you may ask? Netflix requires a camera to have a true UHD 4K sensor with a minimum of 3,840 photo sites across, high quality capture format such as RAW or an intra frame compressed codec, 16 bit linear or 10 bit log processing, capture transfer functions such as S Log 3 or Canon Log 2 and the list goes on, including capture color science, no tempering with original files, maintaining file metadata, etc. However, Netflix also stated that not all cameras that meet these capture requirements are approved. These requirements are the minimum specifications necessary for a camera system to be considered for approval. Other attributes must be taken into account, such as dynamic range, form factor, stability, workflow compatibility, and more. Now don't start throwing rocks, as Netflix is also flexible in some criteria that allows you to use unapproved cameras as well. You see, Netflix requires 90% of a program's final runtime to be captured on approved cameras using their capture requirements. For the remaining 10% of the final runtime, and in unique use cases, Netflix allows for other cameras to be used on production. This includes everything from PTZ cameras to crash cams, action cameras, and cell phones. Among the more obvious reasons is that Netflix serves as a third-party verification for a camera's quality. If Netflix says it's a good camera, it must be a good camera. This is supported by Netflix's reputation for demanding high-quality original footage to create its own original content. And despite what you may think about any story, the movies and shows Netflix has created look good. A second part of the equation is that many of these cameras are an investment for owners or operators. The last thing you want is to be close to snagging a job and then realize the equipment you use and are comfortable with isn't going to cut it for a potential Netflix gig. If you are working with an independent production, Netflix approval helps future-proof the work so that if you are hoping for an acquisition, you are at least fulfilling the expectations of the distributor. Finally, if you aren't a super techie producer or cinematographer, having a basic list of solid cameras to choose from simplifies a part of the process. Instead of spending time researching all of the different features of video cameras and codecs and sensors and aspect ratios, you can head over to Netflix and just select what makes sense for your production. Should you buy only Netflix approved cameras? Well, yes and no. Netflix approved is a good start, especially if you're a professional. However, if you are a beginner who is still exploring, any camera with decent capabilities is a good option. Netflix's approval process assumes that there will be some form of production happening and therefore demands certain capabilities that not everyone needs, like very specific metadata requirements. If you are working mostly for yourself or on small YouTube projects, you don't need all those extras. While not required for Netflix productions, some camera and image capture practices will help you avoid common pitfalls and workflow errors in production that can lead to added costs, lost time, or creative compromises. Starting with black balancing, sometimes referred as black shading, a camera sensor should perform regularly in accordance with manufacturer-provided guidance. For optimal results, one should allow the camera to reach its normal operating temperature prior to performing the sensor calibration. The black balancing or shading procedure defines an imaging system's proper black level given its current operating state and may reduce the visibility of misbehaving pixels while operating under fluctuating temperature ranges. Up next, framing chart and aspect ratio. To ensure onset framing meets the creative and technical needs for your production, a framing chart should be shot before principal photography begins and processed through the dailies, editorial, and VFX pipelines. On the other hand, when it comes to visual storytelling, aspect ratio is a serious creative choice and can affect your overall workflow. Now anamorphic lenses. 
Over time, they've become a runaway favorite for everything from professional cinematographers to up-and-coming indie filmmakers. When using anamorphic lenses, extra resolution may be required for capture, so definitely keep this in mind when choosing the camera. Color Management In order to ensure compatibility with your project's color pipeline, productions should test each camera format's color space transformation into the working color space. Lastly, Recording single takes across multiple camera cards, also known as spanning clips, should be avoided unless absolutely necessary. Spanning clips across camera cards increases the likelihood of downstream workflow issues. So that was all about how Netflix approves cameras for their original content. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, consider subscribing.